Hey, what's up guys? Rudelanel here, jumping back on board with you for another batch tutorial. Let's get the Windows command line ready to roll. Let's get Notepad++ ready to roll as well. Alright. Now, today I'm going to be introducing a new concept to you guys in batch. Now, uh, if you guys are familiar with any other programming languages, or scripting languages, or just sort of like the idea of computer science in general, you are probably well aware of the, uh, the if statement. And what the if statement does is it allows you to execute a piece of code, or like uh, just run some commands, run as many commands as you'd like, only if a certain condition is met. It's kind of a lot like the way we use if in, like, English. Like, if something is true, if the sky is blue, then uh, you can breathe air. And, like, there's commands and things that you can go around. I, I know there is no correlation between the sky being blue and you breathing, but it's just, it's just an example, you know? So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at this and how we can create it in batch. So, I'm going to create a new script. You can do the very same. I'll call mine script.bat. Obviously, you can call yours whatever you would like. But let's get started with the add echo off. Go to our main function as usual, create the main function, go to the end of file, and that's all we need. Okay, now I want to show you guys the syntax of the if statement before we go into anything uh, too hardcore, too crazy. Alright, so how about we need, how about we need a good amount of food? So let's say, let's say we've got a variable food, so we're going to set food to be 10. So we've got... 10 pieces of food, but let's say what we need. Needed food can be uh, 10 as well. Okay, so now these two are equal, and uh, food and needed food are both equal, and this is something that we're going to be able to look at inside of our conditional statement, because usually you'll just want to test if a condition is true. Now, if these two are equal and we can test for that operation, then yeah, it's it'll just go ahead and run the code. But before we do all that, let's echo out, hello world. Create a new line to make things a little cleaner. And I'm going to create another thing. Goodbye, world. So this will just help you in a little bit of visualizing and actually understanding what else happens with the if statement. <laughs> and that's a pun for any of you guys that actually know this uh, know this thing. <laughs> All right. But uh, we'll use the if statement. And it's the if command right here. You can go ahead and check this out with the uh, with the help statement in your Windows uh, command line if you'd like. Help if. And it'll give you a whole lot of information that we're going to dive into in a later tutorial. But for now, I just want to show you guys the syntax and that sort of thing. But a whole ton of these. We're going to be looking at a whole lot of this a lot later. But we just want the if for if right now. And then we put our condition. Our condition is like usually right after the uh, the if keyword. So now we want to test if our, the food that we have is equal to the amount of food that we need. So if the value of food is equal to, and we use two equal signs when we're testing for in like conditional statements and that sort of thing. Because when we're using one equal sign, it's called an assignment operator. When we're using two equal signs, it's called a comparison operator. So whenever you're using a conditional statement, always keep in mind you should be using two of these equal signs. Now if food is equal to needed food, or the value of needed food, now we can group commands. And we've been using, we've been grouping commands inside of like our our little set local and end local things, which is a good reminder to have. Whenever we'd want to return a variable inside of a function, we'd use this ampersand and then return a variable. But the thing is, that ampersand only allows one where these uh, parentheses are going to allow us to use multiple. So after our condition, after our if statement, we'll want a parentheses and then we'll close that parentheses right after we're done. It's almost like a little bit of a code block. Like when you had a function, you had a beginning and an end. Now, if statements have that same sort of structure. They have a beginning and an end. All right. Now, inside of the code block, uh, we can actually explain the code or at least do the things we need to do. So I'm just going to echo out, we have enough food. Okay. Now, if we hop back on over to our shell here, we can run our script. Script says, hello, world. We have enough food. And then, goodbye, world. Okay. So, because food is equal to 10 and needed food is equal to 10, 10 is equal to 10, so our condition is returning true. So that means that it'll go ahead and run all the code that's inside the stuff here. Now we can put as many of these commands as we'd like, dir, cls, pause, all this crap, but as long as it's inside this little body, 
the code body that we've set up here for the if statement, it'll run it. So, what if we had something else, though? What if the food was not equal to the needed food? So what if we change needed food to be, how about 20? Let's see what happens. We can run script, hello world, and goodbye world. Do you guys see what it, ha what it what happened here? We, g we get our conditional statement. If 10 is equal to 20, we should do all this. But 10 is not equal to 20. So what it does is it skips all this. The batch interpreter just completely ignores what's actually inside the code block here and goes on with the rest of the program, no matter what it may be. It'll just carry on and continue. Now, uh, we can sort of use this tactic inside of a lot of our scripts, and the if statement is really, really helpful, I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, with this, we can make a lot more sophisticated and dynamic programs, uh, just because we can test or try to understand what the user has inputted, what information we may be gathering, and that sort of thing. But the if statement has a whole lot of uh, quirks and other parameters and things that we can supply to uh, change the operation or how the if statement actually works. And we're going to be taking a look at those in the, uh, in the next couple of videos. So thank you guys for watching, though. I hope you enjoyed this short little introduction to the if statement, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.